Hachio. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Boccaccio. I'm Senior Associate Director of Diversity Recruitment here at CBS. We are so excited to have you here to learn more about the January Entry Program. Um, I'm joined by an amazing panel, um, and we'll have them introduce themselves shortly. Um, but first, before we kick off, I just want to say thank you to you all for joining in person. Thank you to the hundreds of people who are joining um, on Zoom. We are really excited to have you. Um, and we just want to talk about January entry. It's one of the most unique options, I think, out there for any MBA program. Um, we want to talk about what makes it special. Um, and just before we kick off, I want to say a huge thank you um, to the admissions team for putting this event together, specifically Kate Murphy and Nicole Newham, um, who did so much work to put this together. So thank you. All right. So just a quick overview of January entry before we launch into our panel. Um, so this is what you can expect from this evening. I'm going to do an admissions overview. We're going to introduce our panel. We're going to have a panel discussion around January entry. We have folks who uh, represent the Career Management Center, current students and alums um, on the panel. So you really get a 360 view um, of what the January entry uh, option has to offer. And then we'll launch into your questions. Um, so definitely keep note as you're hearing from the panelists and hearing the admissions overview, what kind of questions you have, and we'll answer them live. Um, especially during Q&A, I encourage folks to ask questions that they think the whole group could benefit from hearing. Um, if you have a really specific situation, happy to chat with you one-on-one -on -one after the event. Amazing. So let's dive in to our admissions overview. So, at CBS, we have two different entry options, um, the traditional August entry and then the January entry, um, which we're talking about here tonight. Um, so for both options, you graduate with the same MBA, you have the same core, same elective options, um, but the January entry program is really unique in that it's designed for folks who don't want or need a summer internship in order to achieve their post MBA goals. Um, so at Columbia Business School, we have a class in total of around 860 students. About 645 of those students start in the August entry program and about 215 of those students start in the January entry program. So that's another great advantage of January entry is that you're kind of in a more intimate um, group for your first uh, semester, second semester, and then you join all the August entry folks um, to be together throughout your second year. Um, so as you can see from this slide, um, your first semester, if you take a look at the, the purple line down below, that's a January entry path. Um, your first semester when you start in the spring is all core classes. So at Columbia Business School, um, we really design our core so that you can get down all those business fundamentals in a pretty concise manner. Um, you have one full semester of core and then one last core class in your second semester, um, which is also super unique. Right? There are a lot of MBA programs out there who have a full year of core classes and we really design our program so you can get those business fundamentals down and then move into our over 300 electives on offer and design your MBA program, right? What What's the best fit for you um, in picking and choosing electives that make sense based on your post-MBA goals? Um, so throughout the summer, um, you'd be in residence on campus here at Manhattanville, um, and you'd be taking that one last core class and some of your elective classes. Um, and two of the students on our panel here tonight are currently in residence, uh, taking block weeks, elective classes, and they can talk more about that. Um, during the panel session. Um, and then throughout your second year, you join all those August entry folks who come back from their internship and you take classes all together. Um, and you're together throughout um, your time on campus in clubs and social activities and other things. So you're certainly intermingling um, with the August entry students throughout your time at CBS. Um, and as I mentioned at the top, the January entry program is really designed for specific types of profiles, right? So we want um, to offer this program option as a 16 month accelerated MBA, um, but that isn't a great fit for every single goal. So we just wanted to kind of define a little bit better what that means. Um, so if you don't want or need a summer internship, this could be a great fit for you. That means people who are maybe sponsored by their current company and planning to return post MBA. 
these are folks who maybe have a family business and are planning to um, go into that family business post MBA. Maybe you already have a network in the you know area in which you want to move it to post MBA, and you don't need that kind of full three month summer internship to break into that because you already have um you know existing contacts. Or maybe you're an entrepreneur. Um, you're kind of getting something off the ground now, and you really want to dedicate your time during the MBA to this entrepreneurship classes, and you're going to launch that um, you know startup post MBA. So those are some of the the really good fits, and obviously there are a lot of different options. So we can talk about, you know, your individual profiles um, and whether or not you think you might be a good fit for January um, as well. Always happy to chat about that. And I think Mike on the CMC from the CMC will chat a little bit more about that as well. And just a few other pieces um, when you think about admissions information for January entry. So we have one deadline um, for the January entry program. Um, that's a little bit different if you've seen our August entry program, there's an early decision and regular decision deadlines. Um, that's not the case for January entry, just one deadline in September of this year. Um, so it's still really early, right? Um, our January entry um, application launched last month. Um, and we often see lots of um, applications coming in closer to the deadline. I heard someone say um, earlier this week, like, oh, I heard January entry 2023 is already filled up. No, don't don't um, believe that. Um, that is, it's definitely um, something where we see more applications closer um, to the deadline. So rest assured, that's not the case. Um, but that being said, we do want to point out the second piece here: our rolling admissions process. Um, so all applications at Columbia Business School are reviewed in the order in which they're received, and that's how we render decisions as well. So from the date you submit your application, it's usually about a six-week turnaround from when you hit submit when you hear back um, if you've been offered an interview. From the date of the interview um, or when your interviewer submits their feedback, it's about a two-week process to hear back if you've been offered a spot in the program. Um, so if you were to submit your application you know, tonight, <laughs> you get home and you're like, okay, I learned everything I need to know about January entry and I can submit my application, um, you'd hear back likely um, you know, within about six weeks, um, and you would know all in all, probably within two months. So by end of September, you could, you know, have your plans for January all wrapped up, um, which is great. Um, so just know that, that we do fill the class as we go, and there's always some advantage to applying earlier rather than later. Um, and then the last piece on this slide that I just want to highlight is that we have a really, really strong global contingent in our January entry program. Um, our total class between August entry and January entry is about 48% international, um, but in just the January entry 2022 class, it's 61% international citizenship. And we're really proud of that. We have a global MBA, we're in a global city, and we wanna make sure that our students are building a global network. And we think it's really great that so many people from around the world see this as the destination to get their MBA. And we'll, I'm sure, talk a little bit more about that um, as you turn to the panel. So without further ado, I want to do some introductions for the folks who are on the panel. Um, so as I mentioned, we have um, a member of our career management center, we have an alum, and we have two current students for you to hear from. Um, and I want to turn it over to Mike De Lucia, um, who is class of 89, so also an alum. We have two alums <laughs> on the panel. Um, just to do a quick kind of overview of what you can expect from career management center resources, and then we'll dive further into uh, great. Thanks so much for being here tonight. And uh, in introducing myself, yes, I am a, a very happy Columbia MBA alum. I've been back to CBS probably almost over eight years. And most of my career prior to that had been initially in the um, financial services side of things at JP Morgan on the sales and trading side. But I was the MBA recruiter for, for that um, group for a uh, couple of recruiting seasons, but most of my career after that was in the media and entertainment industry, doing international marketing for film at 20th Century Fox and a number of other things, but then decided to come uh, come back to CBS and uh, and talk about how you make career transitions uh, really live with, uh, with students here. But um, from the CMC's perspective, I'm the executive director of International and one thing to think about is that I, I work across the different parts of the CMC. So part is career education advising side, 
but also the employer relations side of things. So as much as I happen to be a full-time advisor working with our current students, I also very much work with our employer relations team, particularly focused on uh, international employers. But the, the way to think about the structure of the CMC is that there are a little bit two sides of the house. And for all of you, whether you're coming in for January entry or you're coming in the fall, it's the same exact career education content that we provide to each of you. There is absolutely a very, very robust online content. It's a whole sort of course in some ways, careers course that's accessible to you, even beginning prior to, to, to coming industry research related material, you know, sort of baseline things that get you sort of thinking before you arrive. And then everything from self-assessment to kind of managing offers and everything in between. But then there's really the career advising side. And that comes from really four different levels. It's a good way to think of this from full-time advisors like myself in our office, where we're, we're generalists on the one hand to talk about anything. We're also liaisons to a lot of our professional clubs. Um, and, but then it kind of goes from there where there are almost the equivalent of peer advisors for careers where our CMC fellows, there's about 70 of them who will be able to, they're trained through our office and they hold appointments as well with you. We have our CMC coaches who are industry practitioners who about 45 of them who spend a lot of time uh, with our students, either one-on-one -on -one or, or kind of small groups, and they are marketed to you by industry. So they're a really nice safe space, but with really industry practitioners from five to 15 years out. And I don't want to leave out the executives in residence because I think that's something very unique here at CBS. And these are C-suite level professionals, retired, semi-retired, and they are, can, you can talk to them about through the arc of one's career. So it's really about thinking about this you know, a love, different levels of advising and career education. And then our employer relations team, they're fostering relationships with employers on your behalf, new ones, but then also really maintaining these um, employer relationships, whether it's for structured campus recruiting or really just helping to facilitate that um, posting of, of, of jobs here on campus. And there's a whole, um, you know, again, online job portal dashboard that's called we call coin where you do everything advising um, booking related but it's also where you do everything from you know job um, postings and applying and everything you learn from on campus recruiting so i'll stop there for the moment thanks so much mike and i know so many people um get an mba in order to make some kind of career change or to you know up their skill level um, and the career management center is such a huge huge resource um, and they do so much, as Mike explained. Um, and I think it's really important to know that those exact same resources are available for our J term and our August entry students. Um, so without further ado, I wanna introduce um, our alums and students on the panel as well. Um, can I have each of you introduce yourselves and take a couple minutes to touch on what you did pre-MBA, um, what you are looking to do post-MBA, what you're currently doing post-MBA, and then kind of what types of clubs or social things you're most involved in or were most involved in um, at CBS. Um, so I'll start off with Zach. Great. Thanks, Katie. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Zach. I graduated CBS in 2019. What I would do to go back and have another uh, 16 months at the school. So uh, before CBS, I, I lived and worked uh, in China, and I started a small food and beverage business out there. Uh, at CBS, uh, I, I mean, the, the clubs and organizations are really incredible, and that was really the, the highlight of the experience for me, I was involved in a bunch of different things. I was the, the head of the peer advisor program, which are the group of very enthusiastic students that will plan your orientation and welcome you into the school and kind of create the culture uh, you know, of, of campus. Um, I was also uh, on the board of a few other organizations. So I was on the board of the General Management Association, which is as ambiguous as it sounds, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the kind of the organization that helps with more um, recruiting for leadership development programs and more management type jobs um, post MBA. Um, I was also on the board of Hermes Society, which is Katie, <laughs> we worked uh, a lot together, the, uh, the student branch of the admissions team. And so helping to, you know, 
do uh, a lot of information sessions and welcome uh, people into uh, school um, before they actually arrive on campus. And then I also uh, was the captain of the flag football team. A um, <laughs> little different, yeah. And so uh, that was my experience at, at CBS. And uh, as you can see on the screen, I, uh, I'm now working at Estee Lauder. Um, I started as a PMA, which is the Leadership Rotational Program. And uh, after that, I moved into a, an e-commerce strategy team that focuses on, um, you know, on, on Asia. So that's a little bit about me. I guess I'm next. Hi, everyone. My name's Steph. Lovely to meet you. Um, I was born and raised in El Salvador. I went to school in Massachusetts. After I went to school there, I got a degree in finance and worked in private banking in Boston for about four or five years. And fun fact, my family are real estate developers in Central America. So I knew I wanted to form part of the family business, which is why J-Term just made sense for me. I'm currently starting to take real estate classes to hopefully the plan is after CBS, I'll join my family business. Um, and the clubs that I'm a member of, similar to Zach, Hermes Society. Um, yes, I'm also going to be a PA. So I'm going to be an orientation leader for the students that are coming in in August, I believe. Um, I'm also a member of the Real Estate Association, which again, makes sense for my long-term career goal. And I am also part of the Family Business Club, which is amazing. So many networks. It's, it's great because it's a community of different industries, people from around the world. We have people from South America, Asia. Um, it's, it's pretty diverse. I feel like not only is it we it's strong network, but we've also made pretty strong friendships. So yeah, no, my, my experience has been very enriching and I'm, I'm looking forward to the year that I have ahead. Hi everyone. Oh, hello. <laughs> my name is Natalie Lewis. Um, I am in Deb's class, um, J term class of 2023. I previously, um, I went to school undergrad in Atlanta at Emory, and then I started my career at Deloitte Consulting in Atlanta within the human capital division, um, was there for about three and a half years and had an amazing experience and knew I wanted to get an MBA. Um, and the Columbia J term was a really great fit for me um, as a sponsored consultant, knowing I was going back into consulting and, but really wanting to kind of grow my network, gain new skills in an MBA. Um, so I will be returning back to Deloitte after. Um, I might be switching groups, which is a, a cool thing that you can do at Deloitte. Um, and yeah, so during my time at CBS so far, I have had a wonderful experience and have gotten um, pretty involved on campus, um, mainly involved in our Women in Business Club called QUIB. Um, and this past semester, I led our Women's Week team where we had um, five days of different events and speakers and workshops, which was really fun. And then this upcoming year, I'll be leading the admissions um, team for QUIB. Um, so helping with events like these and talking with prospective students. And I'm also involved in the Health and Wellness Club. Um, so helping to uh, create both employment opportunities for CBS students in the health and wellness space, and then also just fun programming. So we'll do workout classes together, meditation, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, very, very excited to talk with you all. Thank you all so much for those intros. And I feel like just from this small subsection of what a January entry student looks like, you see so many different perspectives. And also, you were all so involved, like <laughs> leading on campus, Slack football, industry associations. I love it. Um, so I know a lot of the questions we have um, about starting at CBS, whether it's January entry or August entry, is what's the culture going to look like? You know, what are my fellow students going to look like? Um, I think it's really important to know that when you start off on campus um, in those core classes that I mentioned in your first semester, you take all of them with a group called your cluster, which is usually about 70 students. Um, and then you do all of your you know, projects, case studies for those core courses with a group called your learning team. And clusters and learning teams are so, so important to the culture um, at CBS. Um, and so I'd love to turn to Deb to talk a little bit more about that. Can you talk about the diversity of your learning team, of your cluster, um, and of just J-Term as a whole? Absolutely. So start off by learning team. Um, we're a group of five from all over the world, Italy, Bangladesh, Chile, El Salvador, and New York. So we're pretty diverse. Um, with the learning team, you kind of get nervous, you know, like it's going to be clashing cultures. 
And that was the opposite for us. I think that we really excelled because we all had different perspectives and we all came from different industries. Um, one of our team members, she was a consultant from McKinsey. We had another person who started their own um, travel agency app. He's very smart. He's a software engineer. He previously worked at Amazon. Um, it, Jose, who's a um, Chilean engineer, and then I had my finance background. Um, so it was really, I think, having different perspectives, different experiences really made working with them pretty enriching. And it really made us, I don't know, grow together and excel in our classes, in our core classes, which is kind of what you want. You want that support system and people that have different, that are subject matter experts and different expertise. So that was great. And then in terms of cluster, um, I think I, I feel like we all feel like we got lucky with our clusters. I think that you're going to talk to anyone and they're going to be like, oh, my cluster is the best. And that's, you're going to hear that from anyone. And I think that what makes just J term great is the amount of diversity that we have. It's over, like, I think for us, it's again, over 60% international students. So again, it's different cultures and what's great. It's everyone is so open-minded and welcoming. That's an environment that's like really fostered at CBS. And it's it's so great because you're not only expanding your network, but you're making friends around the globe. And during classes, it's so great when our cluster members participate because you just feel like you're exposed to different experiences that they've had in their industries in their own country. So overall, it's a very mind-opening, enriching experience. And I'm, I'm very excited for you all to get to experience that. Thank you. Thank you. And I think um, that emphasis on having folks on a learning team um, that have different strengths is really important to us because we want you to get into the core courses and feel like, okay, maybe there's one course that's a little bit more comfy for me, maybe for Deb that was, you know, corporate finance, um, but maybe there's something that's brand new to me and someone else is going to take the lead on that. Or here's where I'm going to stretch myself and, you know, my learning teammates are going to help me out with that. So we really are super intentional about building those learning teams and making sure that they're a microcosm of, you know, the larger class as a whole. Um, so thanks so much for going over that. Um, so Natalie, I'd love to turn to you to talk about um, what students can expect if they are entering the January entry program as a sponsored student. Um, how did you decide to make that decision and kind of what are you hoping to gain from the curriculum um, and take back to, you know, Deloitte um, post MBA? Yeah, definitely. Um, so there are quite a few sponsored students in J term. I think what's very cool is, as Deb and everyone has mentioned, they are from all over the world, all different companies, and we learn so much from each other. And so for me, I decided to pursue my MBA specifically at Columbia J term, because one, I wanted that international exposure, I wanted to meet people, um, you know, consultants and non consultants from all over the world who have had very different project experiences from myself. Um, and I wanted that expedited nature of an MBA. I had already had a lot of great business experience um, throughout my time in consulting and was ready to just hit the ground running. Didn't necessarily need a summer internship to pivot careers um, because I knew I was going to go back into consulting. So J term was a really great fit for uh, me, as well as a lot of other people who are in consulting and maybe want to go back into consulting after. Um, and regarding, you know, how I've used my MBA time to really enhance how I'm going to go back to Deloitte after, I have tried to take as many classes as possible that fill in the gaps of things I didn't get to learn during my first few years out of undergrad. So for me, I focused a lot on kind of higher level strategy and communication and change management and consulting. And so I wanted to really focus on data analytics and um, working in finance and accounting during my MBA. And so, of course, I took all of the core classes that we talked about um, in those areas. And then I'm also focusing my elective coursework in analytics. Um, so, for example, in the fall, I will be taking um, like a second level of business analytics um, that's a follow up to one of our core classes. And I'm really just pushing myself to kind of focus on that skill set, as well as, as um, you said, there's so many amazing electives that are very applicable to um, consulting. So it's definitely been, you know, a really great academic experience, as well as we have um, a million different clubs that we've talked about that really helped to, to build those skills as well. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that last point, that it's not just the curriculum and the academic experience that's really upskilling you. It's like a lot of the networking and the 
you know, interactions with clubs and things like that. That's amazing. And I'm sure planning Women's Week was a whole new experience too, right? Um, love that. Um, I'm gonna turn to Zach. Anyone who knows Zach knows that he is the biggest champion of CBS ever. Um, but I'd love to know how you decided that CBS was the right fit for you. And then if you could talk about kind of post MBA, um, what are, you know, how did you land where you are now and what you've taken from the MBA into to your current role? Thanks, Katie. Well, well said. Uh, <laughs> so when I was when I was trying to figure out what the what the next steps were and decided I want to go to business school, I, I was born and raised in New York City. I had uh, been living in China for for quite a while. I wanted to come you know, closer to my roots and the connection that CBS has with the city. Um, I mean, there's so many different you know, immersion opportunities, whether those are classes, internships. I had an in semester internship that I got through the school uh, at a brand strategy firm. And so and it all it all uh, it certainly came into fruition. But um, that was one thing that certainly drew me to CBS initially. And the other thing that really stood out to me was how collaborative and supportive of an environment it is. Um, I mean, I can tell stories of my learning team and how how close we still all are. We're, we're going to a, all six of us are going to a wedding together uh, coming up uh, in September. And so it's just an environment that that really fosters um, you know collaboration, pushing each other, you know, challenging each other, working together. And that uh, I was really drawn to. And that's in addition to the incredibly high number of mentorship opportunities and support that you're actually given by the school. I know Mike touched on some of them from the career side, but also from the peer side, um, you know, and from clubs, there are just so many ways that you re can receive support, advice, and that's what really resonated uh, with me um, when I was trying to decide uh, where I wanted to go. And taking that just you know one step further for the J term experience, it's like a little microcosm of the entire of the entire school, right? It's a smaller subset. You get very close with with one another. It's super international, which again was very important for me coming from coming from abroad. Um, but then the great part is second year, everyone is pushed together, and so you start off getting to know and and really uh, having the support of a smaller group. But then you get really drawn into the larger um, CBS uh, campus and environment um, moving into your second year. And then I guess the last thing I'll just uh, touch on is, um, you know, how I ended up where I am at Estee Lauder. Uh, if you aren't sure what you want to do, I guess I am a case study that you can do the formal recruiting process as a J-termer, uh, which I did. I'm sure Mike can speak uh, more to that, but I knew that I wanted to, um, you know, work in in something related to management. I wanted to be in a leadership development program. I actually wanted to flip from doing something entrepreneurial to a larger organization, larger company to get a little bit more structure. And so um, I went through the formal recruiting process um, here, at, here at CBS and landed an incredible role. Thanks so much for touching on that, Zach, because that's definitely where I want to go next. Um, We've talked a lot about you know folks who come from a sponsored background or family business background, but there definitely are people who make a, a shift when they come in through the January entry program um, and participate in what's called on-campus recruiting in the fall of their second year, um, and that's definitely a you know a possibility for you as a January entry student. Um, but Mike, I'd love for you to touch on you know what does that really look like for January entry students, and what advice would you give anyone who's kind of looking to do that? Sure. Um, just to put it into context or even define what kind of on-campus recruiting means, you can think of it actually as the more structured type of recruiting process where um, companies that may be long-term recruiters at the school will really kind of leverage our employer relations team, help facilitate setting up of, you know, interviews that could be on campus or, or events that could be targeting second years. But that is a portion of the kind of opportunity or recruiting that you can do across the year, right? And actually, in some ways, that that amount uh, even of companies and opportunities, it's evolved over time. So there is a little bit even less structured. And that's part of also where we've gotten the broader interests of students to go a lot of different places. So the, the big thing, though, is the kinds of companies that can predict their needs pretty far in advance have a leadership development program of some kinds or an MBA campus recruitment track tend to start early. And actually it will hit very early in the start of September. And so J-termers are absolutely able to participate and apply and do everything. But what that means is preparation in advance 
and that's part of what why we're here. We're not on vacation over the summer, even though there's a lot of people for doing summer internships. We're here and actually working with our J-termers um, to help you prepare for what could be coming as early as you know, application drops early September, interviews that are on campus kind of interviews that would be in, in October, but then some interviews could happen even earlier than that. So it's just about kind of saying, that's what we talk about with on-campus recruiting, but recruiting happens all throughout the year and really depends on how a particular industry hires and whether they're an immediate hire kind of person. You may be doing more relationship building over the year and networking and really applying in some cases, not until maybe March, right? Because that's how that industry would hire. Others are gonna be much earlier and it depends on what your goals are. Yeah, and I think that it's so important that at CES you have the resources of the CMC and they know like if you walk in and say, I wanna work at SA Lauder, they can offer those resources to you. Of, Here's the steps that you need to take. So absolutely leverage the CMC. They have unbelievable relationships um, throughout the city and throughout the world. Um, and I think it's really important to know that, that you can make that transition through the January entry program. Um, amazing. Thank you to our panelists for kind of going over some preset questions of what we knew um, were important topics to cover, but we definitely want to turn it over to the folks in the room and the folks um, who are joining online to ask some questions. I'm sure that this discussion has percolated a lot of questions for, for the group. Um, and I just want to kick it off with a couple that came in from the folks who um, are tuning in online. Thank you so much all for joining us. Um, we had one question about um, reapplicants who are you know, maybe applied through the August entry program first and are now applying to the January entry program. Um, so if anyone who's in the room or tuning in online, if that's your situation, um, my biggest piece of advice um, when you're a reapplicant at CBS, you have one essay um, to submit for us, um, and that's just a reapplicant essay where you tell us, you know, what's changed since your last application. And if you're switching from an August entry application to a January entry application, telling us why January is a good fit for you is, I think, the first thing you should do um, because that's a you know a shift in your your application strategy um, and like maybe your goals. Um, so I think explaining that, explaining why January, and then going over any other pieces of the application that may have changed from year to year um, would be a really good place to start. Um, and that question was from Chetna, so thanks, Chetna. Um, and then we have a question from Max online too that I want to turn to the panel. Um, in terms of community and culture, what would you say is the difference between January and August entry and how do you integrate with the August entry students? So whoever wants to kick it off. I'm happy to. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can get the party started. Uh, so I, uh, I think you, know, you, you can tell that all three of us are very involved in the, in the community. And I think that that is really the, the best way for the January uh, folks to to become involved, um, you know, in the rest of the the fall termers and the community as a whole. I mean, there are just so many different levels um, of relationships that are built through the uh, different clubs and organizations. Uh, there are obviously a number of professional organizations, and a lot of that focus is going to be on helping you recruit and setting you up for success um, in your you know next steps in in life, but. There also are more social aspects of that where you're getting to know each other. There are one-on-one -on -one mentorships that go on. And so that's a really great way uh, to get to know uh, the fall termers. And so from, from my perspective, it's just diving into the community. Um, and, and obviously, uh, you know, you're gonna have uh, relationships built in, in classes too, but it seemed to me the, uh, the clubs and organizations uh, takes the cake. And to add to that, to me, the biggest difference between August term and J term, I guess it's more, I feel like J term feels more of a global community. We all kind of feel like global citizens because it, we have people from all over the world and which it kind of, it's ironic, but it, it unites us. It's also, we're a smaller cohort. We're 200 of us. So in, especially during summer, we all grow closer together. So because we're smaller in numbers, I think that we're more, it's, it's I feel like towards the end of the summer, it feels more like family. Like we're all like cousins and we, we grow like scarily close. So we're very tight knit. Um, and I think that's kind of like the biggest difference. 
But then again, we see a lot of August term through clubs. Um, I think that that's the first time that I had a lot of interactions with people in August term through the Real Estate Association. I actually traveled with a lot of them to London. And I think that that was the first time that we really bonded. And it was great. And I'm really looking forward to next year where we have mixed classes with them. And that's that's going to be pretty awesome. So yeah, I think those are the main differences. I think that's a really good point about um, 200 people having kind of like the run of campus over the summer. You don't really think about it maybe when you're applying, like what is our experience going to be? But we have these two beautiful new buildings and you are just with 200 of your close friends, like kind of running the show and having all the resources for from our Office of Student Affairs and faculty and the Career Management Center all to yourselves, um, which I think is a really nice part. Um, all right, so we'll turn to folks in the room. If you could raise your hands and just say, you know, your name, maybe where you're from, and then uh, your question for our panel. Yeah, let's start up there. Uh, my name is Frank. I'm from Rye. Um, and once like you're admitted, how's it work for getting like scholarships? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so for our January entry students, um, there's kind of one source of funding for scholarships, which is our need-based um, scholarship fund. Um, so once you're offered admission, you would apply um, through the Office of Financial Aid. So it's a separate process, um, which is important because it's another form to do. So we want to make sure people definitely do that um, if scholarships are you know, an important piece of your you know, MBA decision. Um, so you'd fill that out after being offered admission. And um, that's based on, on neediness in comparison to the larger class as a whole. Yeah. Oh, hi. My name is JJ. I'm from the Philippines. I would love to hear a little bit about your experience from like going to normal classes in January to block classes in the summer and what that's kind of like. I can take that one. Um, so I personally love block weeks. I think there are, you know, some people think that they're pretty tiring because you are in, in class from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But I really like it because you get to really immerse yourself in the material and fully engage as opposed to a normal semester when you're in maybe five, six classes, you know, doing them twice a week. Um, so it definitely was a transition and you need to make sure you have stamina and lots of coffee, but um, you essentially have a little bit of a break after the spring semester. And then we have a May block week. It's optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. And then we go into an A term in summer, which is more of a traditional kind of half semester where you take multiple classes. And then in July, we have four different block weeks that you can or cannot participate in, depending on how you want to stack your schedule. So what's really nice about it is you can really kind of create your own summer. If you want to front load everything and take a ton of classes in the beginning so that you can spend July, August doing an internship, that's great. If you want to spread it out, um, that's also great. It's really up to you to kind of define how you want your summer to look. I think for both of us, we kind of spread out the summer. We're trying to do a lot of classes this summer so that we can maybe do in semester internships, continue to be super involved in campus on the fall. Um, in, <laughs> yeah, and so that's kind of, you know, you can do whatever you want to fit your own semester. Just for folks who might not have heard the term block week before, could you define that for us? Yeah, so a block week is a one week course. You are in it from Monday to Friday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. And it's a way to get three credits out of the way. Um, and really it's it's very immersive. And you know, you're in that one class for the full week as opposed to multiple classes. Yeah, I think the block week um, schedule is has a ton of benefits for our January entry students, um, especially because. It is, as you said, immersive. I think that's a really good word for it. So, you know, um, Natalie's in a negotiations class right now. Like having a negotiations class every day with the same folks, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I'm sure is really telling. I'm sure you can learn a lot about them. Um, so we really do try to, um, you know, pick and choose what types of um, classes are taught in a block week format. Not every class is block week style. And there's going to be a lot of electives your second year that are not block week style just because, you know, the nature of what that content is or whatever it might be. Um, but they're a great, great way to um, take classes throughout the summer. As a I also wanted to add to that, to yeah. JJ's question. Um, so I'm actually taking the family business blog week, which is so great because everyone in the class comes from a different family business, from a different industry. So in terms of networking, it's just so, it's it's just great. You know, like you're spending nine to five with them. We have lunch together. Sometimes I know that people do cases together after school. So it's just a great, great moment for you to network, expand, 
um, your knowledge about different industries and learning about the different family industries and the different cultures. It's it has been super insightful. So I've really enjoyed the class. Thank you. So my name is Amna. I'm from Delhi, India, and like them, I'm also from real estate. Um, so what I personally feel is that it's pretty important to stay in touch with the practical side, the actual market, while you're studying your MBA. And given that you're coming for a JTERM program where you don't necessarily get that summer internship, do you feel organizations and clubs do justice to keep you in tune with the real markets while you're starting to leverage the information from the real world and actually use that in a practical sense in your classroom? Maybe I'll start with the one thing you can speak more to even just real estate. So um, everybody will have the capability in their second year to be able to even do in semester internships, right? And so that as, as much as you, depending on what you're going after, um, that could either help build a story to help support your full-time recruiting, or if you're going back to a family business, that could actually just provide you some real world experience here. Not every kind of company has the flexibility to hire, you know, on a part-time and semester basis, but, you know, a lot may. And I think you can maybe speak better to real estate, but I think that some absolutely would and depends on the kind of real estate you may be thinking, right? But um, the other piece to that is some, you, somebody talked about the latter part of summer, depending on how you organize your coursework, you may have, you know, up to maybe six weeks or so that you could actually do an internship where you need to consider things would be if you're an international student and you were wanting to do something in the US, you absolutely would not have eligibility. Most people are on an F1 visa. You can't do work authors, you know, paid work off campus until your fall semester. But absolutely otherwise, you know, you could return to a home country and do or somewhere else you can get work authorization. Or if you're a US domestic student, um, you absolutely can do it during that period. But it, again, would not be a big 10 to 12 week structured internship program, but there are opportunities to get that on the ground experience. Amna, and to expand on your question. Um, so I took the real estate finance class during summer, which was six weeks. And I think that it's very practical because we not only are we doing cases, but we're also, we, a lot, we explore a lot what's going on in the market right now. We really dived into real estate private equity. That was great. We also see kind of like how, like, for example, like the central bank's interest rate rise is going to affect the housing market. So it's, it's extremely practical. And also the professors are really willing to help if you're interested in recruiting, they have amazing contacts. So it's in terms of practicality, I think, I think it's really great. Yeah, just one last piece I'd, I'd throw out there is um, at CBS, half of the faculty on staff are adjunct faculty, which means they're working in the city and then coming up to campus to teach. Um, and that's really intentional because we, of course, know building the foundations through the, the theory side, the folks who are, um, you know, our tenure track faculty, that's really so important. But then we also know, as you said, um, bringing in what's really happening in real time in the markets is also super important to us. So about 150 are uh, tenure track faculty and about 150 are adjunct faculty currently working um, in the city. So that's great. Yeah. Hi, Dan from London. And does the professional experience vary from J term to summer term generally in terms of like the student body? Oh, you mean like types of backgrounds yeah. professionally? Yeah, I would say that there's some variation um, because as I mentioned up at the top, the kind of profile for who um, January, for whom January entry is a good fit um, is a little bit different. So people who are you know, complete career changers who want to go into, say, investment banking or management consulting and don't have backgrounds already in those industries, um, they definitely gravitate, I would say, towards our fall entry program, um, whereas um, entrepreneurs, family business, sponsored people who are making, you know, I would say, um, shifts, but less kind of drastic shifts um, are in our January entry program. Well, I guess in terms of the number of years they have, like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, years of professional experience. I think it's pretty similar, actually, um, in the August entry program and in the January entry program. It's about five years is the average, um, but we have people with you know, a range from two to 15 plus, depending on the, the year, so. Oh, Katie, I was going to add also, it does feel, though, as J term's a little older. Yeah. Yeah. Than August term. I think it depends year over year. Um, but yeah, it might net out that it's a little. Yeah. 
uh, Brian Hehim from the Story of Queens. Um, the question that I have is speaking of like older students, I'm like sure. 15 years in the workforce. Yeah. Um, and so my question I think is uh, towards the career management center, what changes in terms of how those coaches work with you know, students who have maybe more experience, have some management or leadership background stuff, like what, what, what changes? I mean, the, the thing, if you think about it, it's a sort of conversation that could happen with somebody who's doing an executive MBA as well. Um, and some of, uh, and in a case like that, somebody may be thinking, I want to recruit for what a full-time MBA is going after. Part of the conversation is, well, what is the, the role that you're looking to do? Um, what's required for that role? What level is that? And whether that's the right role for you? Because that a lot certain kind of structured recruiting that might happen, they may be kind of looking for people with a certain number of years of experience, and maybe you have more years of experience that would have a greater value in moving into a lateral higher role into a particular company. And that really primarily what I think that we do is teach you how to fish um, and really how to, to conduct a really effective search, how to basically craft your materials, your story, how to market yourself, how to tell that story effectively, how, you know, and moving towards that interview process. So it's a journey. So it really starts with, what are you thinking? Where do you think you want to go? You know, what, and then working from there and then what the right um, recruiting process, timeline, how this would hire, you know? And so we, you know, we have a whole experience level career management team that also would work with everybody once they're alumni as well, and they work with the EMBAs, which is actually the team I started on when I first um, came back to CBS. But it really starts from the same kind of conversation. What are you thinking about? What do you want to do? All of, and and we, we talk through that. And I think just to um, address kind of the last question and this question on the admission side, um, for us, it's never, you know, you need X number of years of work experience or this amount is too little and this amount is too much. Um, for us, it's, you know, why now? Like, why is now the right time for your MBA? What have you done to kind of get you here? And what is it that you want to do? Um, and that the person who fits that profile for CBS, you know, has a wide range of experience. I think for us, it's more about you know, like the quality of those years rather than the quantity. And there's no minimum, no max on our side. Um, so just something to think about. Yeah. Hi, I'm Bernadette Franchile. Um, I would like to ask that, do you think that the market appreciate the January entry MBA as the normal MBA? Yeah, I can I'll speak to that. I think the, the market may not be as familiar with it unless you are actually a, a, you know, a regular recruiter at CBS because the fact is that the program is relatively unique. And so part of the what, what is everybody who's in the J term, and you can speak to this, right? Is your job is also to explain what this program is, why you've chosen it, the benefit of it, and how it fits into your goals, right? And the big thing is it's a Columbia MBA, it's the exact same MBA, and you're graduating at the same exact time as everybody else. So visually, the only thing that an employer would see maybe is that you do not, maybe you didn't have that either a summer internship at all, or actually once it goes on the resume, by the way, it just says summer 2022. It doesn't say I did 12 weeks or I did six weeks. Or, you know, So it's really about the experience that you may put on there. So it's the same exact MBA. This really doesn't specifically come up very often. I don't know if you've, you've come across anything. Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. I think that for my experience, companies definitely value the J-term MBA equally. Um, just from a consulting perspective, as an example, I'm going back to Deloitte, but I know Bain recently had an information session specifically for J-termers, like they want to recruit J-term specifically. So I, I definitely think that um, for the companies who recruit at CBS, they see them as the same. Yeah, and as Mike said, when you graduate, you know, you get your diploma in the mail, it just says a master's in business administration from Columbia Business School. So it's it's all the same MBA in the end. Yeah. Yeah, one last question. Yeah. Uh, Shamavi from New York. I actually wanted like to take into account a few of the things you said. You said about like entrepreneurs like to choose in this program because um they can like you know get hit the ground running faster. And also like how in the summer you have like the run of the whole 
facilities because you have like a small cohort. And I know we have like a laying entrepreneurship center and we have like a just like wondering like if that's like something that students take advantage of in like their entrepreneurship like and their careers and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um happy to kick it off and then if um, anyone on the panel has experience either working with the Lang Center or peers who are entrepreneurs um can speak to that. But so the Lang Center for Entrepreneurship is kind of the hub for all startups we see um, that type of thing on campus. Um, and our students have the opportunity to do a summer startup track between their first um, and second year. And then that actually applies to J termers as well. So you can be kind of in residence at the Lang Center essentially working um, on your startup throughout the summer. Um, and we have a um, innovation hub downstairs. It's like reserved for the summer startup track um, throughout the summer. So I think there's tons of resources um, that are available, you know, exclusively to J termers or that you can take advantage of during the summer um, within the Lang Center that are really, really valuable. Take perspectives from folks who. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I, I personally wasn't, you know, as involved in the entrepreneurial side myself, but I do know that I had two, uh, two friends from my cluster who both did the summer startup track and ended up starting those companies full time. Uh, post MBA. So it is something that J termers uh, can certainly leverage and, and take advantage of. Um, I want to be cognizant of time. So I'm going to ask one last question to all of our panelists. Um, we'll just go down the line. If you could give one piece of advice um, to our January entry applicants or someone who's considering <laughs> applying to a January entry MBA, you know, what piece of advice would you give? Maybe think back to yourselves when you were applying. Um, what would it be? We'll start maybe with Deb. This is recommendation for applications? Yes. Okay. Or so, someone looking to enter the January entry program. Yeah. Okay. So I think that when I applied, it was, I think I, rather than being like, why do I want CBS so badly? Obviously, it's a great school, great facilities, amazing faculty. I think I turned it more around with like why I'm a good fit for CBS and why, um, why it, like what I kind of like what I bring to the table and why my perspective is going to be is, is going to be an asset in the classroom. And I think that 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 kind of like shift in perspective really made my application stand out. Yeah, great. I would say definitely be yourself throughout the entire application process. And I know that that's probably overused, but it, it truly is like very important because I feel that maybe admissions can tell if you're trying to fit a specific mold of what they, what you think that they want to see, but they really do want you to bring your full authentic self to the table because we are trying to create a classroom of a lot of diversity um, and people who are coming from different backgrounds, different careers, different perspectives. And so um, feel the feel free to bring your, your full personality and self to the table throughout your essays and your interviews. Great. Great. And, and what I tried to do was reverse engineer a little bit. So tried to think about, you know, where do I want to be you know, down the road, what kind of path do I want to take to get there? And what are the qualities and characteristics of the experience and the journey that I want in order to get there? And so that's how I approach things. And the other thing I'm going to give a second quick one is, you know, get get comfortable and feeling uncomfortable, because, you know, a lot of this process is, it's new, it can be, you know, can push yourself outside of your comfort zone. But I think if you are your authentic self and, and you know, stay true to that, uh, you'll, you'll feel good with that uh, discomfort. I think that was spot on because I think doing a little bit of that upfront sort of self-assessment uh, also as to why this particular program, the J-term, would be right for you is kind of, is important. Um, and particularly because depending on what your goals are careers-wise or, or otherwise, it may not be the best if, if actually a structured summer internship with, you know, a, 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 with an industry or type of company that recruits that way is the best way into that industry or sector. And so that's only if you actually think about some of these things in advance. So if somebody, if everybody in this audience said, <clears throat> I really wanna be an investment banker, it said, I would say, do not do the J term <laughs> <laughs> because basically probably 95% of those jobs are going to be summer internship conversion, right? It's, but the, the J term is a great program, but it's not a great program for you if you want to land in investment banking, except for the fact that people still do regardless, <laughs> but it's harder. <laughs> and so it's really about being thoughtful. 
Yeah. And I think all of this advice is like around the same theme, which is doing a lot of that self-reflection ahead of time. Um, our essays are designed to help you self-reflect along the way. So definitely um, think through them, think about, you know, why now, why this program specifically versus, you know, the August entry. Um, and I hope that some of what you've heard here today is kind of helping illuminate that for you. Um, so with that, I want to say thank you so much to our panel. Really appreciate it. I'm going to put up um, our contact details um, at the admissions office. Um, and my colleague Kate and Nicole and I will be around if folks have additional questions. Just want to thank everyone online for joining us. Thank everyone in person and enjoy this beautiful sunset over Manhattanville um, and the rest of your night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.